All right, so let's go ahead and uh, talk about what we're going to do with this. So we're going to be doing a Kahoot review. And uh, this is going to be sort of an interactive review uh, in the sense that you can play along in the video. Uh, obviously, you won't be able to play along in real time because I'm recording this on my own. Um, I will have my phone out so I can sort of answer along with the questions as well. Hopefully, I'll get them all right. Uh, but I would like for you to also play along and just keep track of how many questions you get right. And then when you're done, go ahead and comment below what uh, your uh, score was uh, with this video, with this review. So let's go ahead and check it out. Okay, so we're going to start with the first question. Question number one, a person does a box jump one meter high using 430 joules in 0.8 seconds. What is the power? So you may recall that the power formula is work over time, right? So you know how in this case how much work he does, or she does in this case, uh, and how long it takes them to accomplish this. So what is the power? So if you said 540 watts, that is correct. Uh, dividing 400, uh, sorry, 430 by 0.8 gives you a number between 530 and 540. We would round up to 540 uh, due to significant digits in this case. All right, so next question. When you boil water to cook pasta, what process primarily heats the water? Is it conduction, is it convection, or is it radiation? Okay, so the reason why convection is the correct answer is because yes, conduction is required to heat the pan, but the pan, the pan is what heats the water that's contacting the pan, and then the water flowing around and replacing and displacing itself so other water molecules come in contact with the pan is, why the boil, is how the boiling water gets heated. That's why it's beneficial to use a lot of surface area with pots uh, to get the water to heat up <coughs> uh, more, more effectively, uh, sorry, with the conductive source. Uh, bigger burner, in other words. All right, next question. Microwaves, x-rays, and ultraviolet rays. What kind of energy are those? Are they kinetic, potential, convective, or electromagnetic? So if you said electromagnetic, that is correct. I know I'm kind of cutting off around five, five seconds or so, but if you ever need more time, uh, I am going to, uh, on the 20 second questions, I'm going to provide the answer at five seconds. Um, and that's uh, just due to time constraints. I want to make sure I get this video in before I have to leave the house. All right, so next question. What's the total resistance in this circuit? All right, this one I'll give you till 10, till the counter is at 10 seconds. This one's not too bad. Yeah, so that would be uh, 450 ohms. Remember, that if it's a series circuit, you just need to add up the values of all of the resistors in the path. So 100 plus 300 plus 50 equals 450. Next question. Blank is the use of a liquid flowing under pressure to generate power. Is it hydraulics, pneumatics, biomass, or solar energy? So the correct answer there is hydraulics. Hydraulics uses liquid, pneumatics would use gas. And I do believe this question is duplicated, so we may see this question again, but we'll see. What is the total resistance in this circuit? So here's another circuit. Let's get a total resistance here. All right, so Answer, now in this case, I, this, this is the kind of question I put on the Kahoot because this is one where the, you can systematically eliminate the other answer choices because if you have a parallel circuit, you'll know that the total resistance is never the sum and it's never the, uh, it's never, it's, it's always less than the, than the lowest valued resistor. So it can't be 20, it can't be 30, it can't be 50 because that's higher, it must be 12. Uh, but if you were to do the reciprocals, 1 over 20 plus 1 over 30, and then add that up and then do the reciprocal of that, you would get 12 for that. 
Okay, next question. What's the device that creates flow in a fluid system? Is it a cylinder? Is it a compressor? Is it a valve? Or is it a chamber? The correct answer is it is a compressor. Uh, you also may hear it called a pump. A pump can also create flow in a system. All right, next question. A property that quantifies the amount of atomic kinetic energy. What's that called? Is it temperature, electricity, quantum energy, or heat? you said temperature, temperature is correct. That is the, and it's actually the average atomic kinetic energy uh, within a substance. It's sort of a standardization. All right, next question. An electrical device that can make, break, or change connections in a circuit. What do you call that? Is it a transmitter, a switch, a battery, or a light emitting diode or LED? Which of these can change connections in a circuit? A lot of you have them on the walls in your house. Yeah, switches. Switches is the correct answer to that. Don't see we didn't see a whole lot of circuits with switches in our in our examples. All right, which of the following is the most effective insulator? So out of the four materials that are listed, which one is the most effective? Is it copper, glass, silicon, or aluminum? And glass would be the correct answer in this question. Glass is the most effective insulator. All right, we got, I think, eight questions to go. What's a large wheel that is turned through a magnetic field in order to generate electricity? Is it a water wheel, a Goodyear tire, a cylinder, or a turbine? So a turbine would be the correct answer in this case. Turbine would be the big magnetic field wheel that we have in all power plants. An energy source that requires raw materials which cannot be regenerated. What do you call that? Is it a renewable source, a non-renewable source, or an inexhaustible source? Yeah, so a non-renewable source would be the correct answer here. Uh, it's more specifically, we just didn't have enough characters to say it, but more specifically, it's an energy source that requires raw materials that cannot be regenerated within a human lifespan. All right, next question. What's the study of using liquid under pressure for power? This is a duplicate. We have this one already uh, in here, so I'm going to skip this question, okay? But the answer again is, uh, is hydraulics. All right, next question. If a material has a U value of 0 0.5, what is its corresponding R value? Is it 0 0.5, is it 2, is it 1.5, or is it 1? We'll give the answer at 15 seconds. <laughs> yeah, 2 would be that. Because remember, the U value and the R value, they're just reciprocals of each other. So if you know 1, just do the reciprocal to find out the other. All right, next question. The property that dictates that thermal energy flows from hot to cold, that's which law of thermodynamics? Is it the second, the zeroth, the third, or the first? Oh, I forgot to press, I'm sorry, I forgot to press the button on there. Uh, the first law, the first law according to this. Now, uh, I'm going to have to look up just, I'm going to pause the video for a second. I want to make sure that that is correct. So just as I suspected, if you said the second law of thermodynamics, that is the correct answer, not the first. The first law is wrong. So when I saw this, I was like, hmm, that seems strange to me. The first law is that energy, uh, thermal energy cannot, you know, can be transferred between, but it cannot be created or destroyed. But the second law dictates that it goes from hot to cold. 
Uh, so give that. All right, so if you had set second, you are correct. Okay, next question. A battery contains what kind of energy? What kind of energy do we get? Is it kinetic energy, chemical energy, electrical energy, or reactive energy? Yeah, chemical energy. The way it's stored is chemical energy. It's a chemical reaction that when created, uh, when, when, when it's sort of allowed to, to happen, it creates voltage and it's converted to electricity. Uh, so yes, we use it for electricity, but the actual stored energy is a chemical reaction, or so it's chemical energy. All right, we got two questions to go. Which material is not used to calculate cavity R value, wall cavity R value in this diagram? So we'll give the answer at 40 seconds here. It shouldn't need too long for this. Is it the framing, is it the wallboard, the sheathing, or the cavity insulation? All right, so the correct answer there is the framing. So remember that when we're doing wall cavity, we're doing the space between the studs. So the framing would not be used in the calculation for wall cavity R value. If we wanted the stud R value, we would include that of the framing, but we would exclude the insulation. Okay, last question. A circuit that has equal voltage across all components, what is that considered? Is it a voltage circuit, a hybrid circuit, a series circuit, or a parallel circuit? All right, so that's a parallel circuit. So if all the voltage is equal, then all the paths are, uh, between all the paths, the voltage would be equal among all of those, and the circuit, uh, sorry, the current would be different between them. Okay, so that's it, that's it. So go ahead and remember, comment below, how many questions did you get right on this? Uh, and remember that we, I did accidentally have one question skipped uh, for getting to put an answer in, and I did skip an additional question. So the maximum score here is actually 17 um, on, this particular exam, so comment below. Uh, I will be posting a study guide answer key. I'm not done with that video. I'm gonna work on that over the weekend and get that posted for you on Monday. Uh, so I hope that this helps you. And if it did, I hope that you uh, give it a like and that um, you enjoy your snow day. Have a great day, everybody.